Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're gonna talk about inks and the people who love them, which would be us, we love our inks. Uh, if you do any crafting or stamping, you probably have some ink pads at home. And today we're gonna go through the different types of inks that are available, what ones are the same as others, what ones are different, and hopefully help you find the ink you need for your next project. This way it'll avoid you over buying or, um, you know, getting duplicate products. So I just set this in front of us while I started the camera because I thought it'd be a little more interesting than just looking at at my pen scratched notes or my paper, but we're gonna move that out of the way and we're gonna get into it here. So, inks can be divided up into a couple different categories. Primarily, they are dye-based or they are pigment-based. Now, dye-based inks, uh, they would be like these guys here, these little cubes that I have. Uh, dye-based inks, and I have a bunch of like larger size pads here, are transparent. They absorb into the paper and they dry pretty quickly. They're usually very vibrant and come in a huge, huge selection of colors. So you get a lot of variety. They're nice for stamping. They're nice for if you like to do layered stamping where you have like one layer of ink and then you stamp another color and another color, like those pretty Altenew uh, flowers layering stamps. Um, and they're, uh, they're probably the most versatile ink you're going to find. So my favorite dye ink would be these Mementos. This would be my recommendation if you're getting started in stamping is to get these uh, they have these in packs of four and packs of 12 if you get the 12 packs um I think there's three different 12, 12 packs, which would give you 36 different colors, and it is a really nice variety to get started with. And there's also reinkers available. I like these because the shape can be kind of challenging to store, but as you can see, I keep them in a in a uh, eight by ten picture frame here, one of those clear tray picture frames, and I can kind of nestle them so I can fit them pretty well. They don't store store quite as well as these cubes. These are just one inch cubes by different uh, companies. They're all essentially the same ink for the most part just in different colors, they all work really well together. Um, you know, so of course, use whatever works best for your situation. But I can show you just the difference here between the size of the pads and the shape of the pads. Um, this is, uh, I would say, about probably, well, let me just hold that up. The, the ink pad itself is about one inch square, so it's probably about an inch and a quarter in size. And then um, the Memento, it probably has about the same amount of surface area, but if you have um, like stamps that maybe you have florals or stuff with a large area and you want to go in and hit certain areas with different colors, you do have that tip that you can go in and you can selectively color things. So it's completely up to you what you prefer, but um, both um, pretty much all your stamps will, all your pads will have reinkers available if they're from a larger company, which is nice. Um, I have memento reinkers for a lot of my pads. I don't have, um, I don't think I have reinkers for any of these, but I have, between the memento inkers I have and the Stampin' Up inkers I have, if I do need to mix an ink to, um, to fit one of these, I can do it. And because they're all the same type of ink, there's no problem doing that. Uh, also dye inks. The classic Stampin' Up pads and the uh, the new spongier ones. I don't have any of those, but um, they are also dye inks. You'll see a lot of companies that have ink pads that uh, look like this. They're all made by Stuart uh, Superior Ink Company, which I kind of like that all these companies use the same, you know, except for Stampin' Up. I don't know who they use. They've been around forever. But um, I like that a lot of these kind of boutique stamp companies use the same manufacturer for these inks because then you can get a very consistent quality be between the brands. So if you like one company's color palette better, you can buy pads from them. If you like another color um, company's color palette, you can buy pads from them. And it's going to be essentially the same ink if you're just getting the basic dye inks. So you'll notice that like a lot of the ink pads that you see are very similar. Now the Stampin' Up! ones do have a bigger surface area for inking, which is kind of nice if you like to ink up large stamps. I purchased, um, I think it was like four, a set of 48 of the Stampin' Up! pads from a, a Stampin' Up! demonstrator that was just going to go, uh, was going to downsize and just use the cubes, and uh, it was great. Honestly, um, that was, that was just, a, that was great. Uh, the reason I went with the, and got some of the little mini cubes is because these big pads take up a lot of space on the table, and when I'm doing, um, a video. I can only have a couple of these pads in frame, but I could have like 20 of the little ones in frame. So that's personal uh, preference. Generally, if I'm sitting down to stamp, I'm going to grab the mini pads, unless I'm doing a batch card, like uh, maybe I'm making a bunch of invitations or a bunch of Christmas cards, then I'll pull out the big pads because they're not going to run out of ink as fast and I won't have to stop and re-ink and it'll be quicker to ink up a large stamp. Um, I also have this 
dye ink pad. I, these aren't available anymore, but if you still have them, I highly recommend you keep them and ink them up with the reinkers you have because that nice firm foam um, pad is so good for direct to paper techniques. I really like those. Those were, they used to be sold at AC Moore in a caddy of 30 colors. Really like those. Um, let's see, what else for just basic, basic dye inks do we have here? I think that's about it. Um, the Memento, most of these, um, most of your inks will be available in cubes and in, or, or minis and in the regular size. Just to show you the difference, this is a regular size pad and this is a mini pad. So um, you can get reinkers, so there's no worry, you can reink the mini ones. It just depends on what you want. Now I like to have the bigger pads on for ink pads that I use for a lot of different or I use often or for a lot of different purposes. Um, I like Memento inks for coloring with alcohol markers. I can use any of these colors here that I want to but I use the Tuxedo Black and I think it's Rich Cocoa or Sepia or something. Um, I use those colors the most, black being the absolute most, so I have a big pad of that because I know I'm going to be inking up so many stamps with this it's going to save time. You can also get rainbow pads. Um, I really like these collided color pads uh, because you can pop them together and you can ink up a stamp that way or you can use a brayer for rainbow backgrounds or you could uh, pull them apart and you can use like alphabet stamps but um, you don't see these used very much anymore. I think they were kind of more popular back when people did more brayered backgrounds and whatnot. Uh, if you do have these, make sure you store them with, uh, with the the die parts apart, the little pads apart so that they don't transfer. Now I worry about the ombre pad here. Well it's meant to it's meant to bleed so that's probably why it's designed that way. Because those ink pads touch, um, you are eventually going to have some transferring of color. You got to make sure you store this flat whereas with these because you can pop the pads apart I store them on their side and I don't have any issue with transferring inks. Um, but those are kind of fun. Uh, they're not going to be as versatile because honestly what you can do, like if you want to do a rainbow effect, you can take your cubes. I really like the, uh, I really like the um, mementos for this because you can kind of tessellate them or nestle them together like that. Maybe put a little piece of tape or something down, but you can put them together like that and you can ink them up with a brayer and do the same thing. So uh, very versatile. Of course, any cube that, that'll work with any cube. I just happen to use mementos most of all because I have ringers for them, so I don't feel shy about um, about really using them. And uh, that pretty much does it for your basic color dye-based ink. So there are other types of dye-based inks. So those are your water-based, dye-based, transparent inks. Another type of ink you're going to see that falls in the dye-based category are the um, the reactive dye-based inks. So your Distress ink would probably be the most popular ink in that category. I recommend the larger pads for these rather than the minis personally because you tend to do ink blending techniques. You're using a brush or a, or a sponge and you're pulling a lot of ink off there versus the minis or you're doing direct to paper. And the reason for this is because you do use up a lot of ink in, with those techniques and it might be frustrating to have the smaller cubes of, um, of ink for that. I prefer the larger ones in this anytime I'm doing direct to paper and I do recommend getting reinkers for any of these pads that you do a lot of direct to ink uh, technique with. Also I find the prism inks by um, Hunky Dory, they're a little bit bigger than the standard one inch cubes so it's nice for ink blending and stuff although I, I'd still prefer to have a bigger pad or the Harmony by Spectrum Noir again a nice big pad. These inks all behave exactly the same. So get if you're looking for a blendable water reactive ink that you can do those fun techniques with, those fun distress backgrounds, um, any of these will fit the bill. Use whatever is easiest for you to find and um, most affordable. I'm not sure if there are reinkers for Prism and Harmony though. I know there's reinkers for distress. All oh, right, another dye-based ink that uh, I use a lot is Ranger Archival. Um, I have this in black and brown, and I use this anytime I'm going to watercolor an image, and I want the, the outlines to really show. Um, I have refilled this pad so many times that I'm actually on my second bottle of reinker. This is my go-to pad when I am prepping for a class. I typically teach um, watercolor techniques for stampers when I go to conventions, and um, I mean I have inked a pad and stamped like 300 images before I had to re-ink it again. So this is really fantastic. Um, it dries fairly quickly. It's an oil-based dye pad. Uh, it's not compatible with your Copics unless it's just like a really fine outline of something and you're being careful around the edges. Um, you can get by with using this for Copics but or alcohol markers, um, but I really think, I really would 
stick to watercolor for these if you're looking for a medium. Um, it is waterproof and permanent when dry, which I really like. It's not the best for stamping on um, on non-porous surfaces, so if you have an art journal page where you've put a lot of like matte medium or, or gloss medium, acrylic paint, things like that, um, you might need to like even do some embossing over it. I, I wouldn't go for this on top of that, but um, for waterproof on watercolor paper, Bristol cardstock, this is this is a great pad to have in a full size uh, full size ink pad. Another dye ink is one that I really don't like, and if I had to buy it again, I wouldn't. Um, it is stays on ink, but it is very um, useful for stamping on non-porous surfaces. So if you like to do, if you like to work on metal, if you like to work on plastic, ceramic, domino tiles, coasters, things like that, this um, ink is permanent on there except for if you touch it with alcohol or you try to color it with an alcohol marker. So that's where it's kind of a bummer because if you stamp with this on like a, a ceramic tile and you want to make a coaster with it and you want to color it, you can't use your alcohol markers or it's going to lift up what you just stamped. So you have to use xylene based markers like the chart pack, the old chart pack markers which really really smell. So this is not my favorite ink pad. Instead for those projects what I would do is I would make a photocopy of whatever it is I wanted to transfer onto a tile and then I would use a xylene based marker to transfer that that I'd color with alcohol pens because I have way more alcohol pens than I do xylene markers. Um, but anyways, it, it's it's there. There's a tip that I will offer for this, and it kind of goes against the manufacturer's instructions. One tip is definitely keep this thing and always replace it. But you'll want to re-inker for this if you buy this ink pad because it dries out pretty quickly. Um, when you are stamping and you notice your image is really faint, uh, re-ink it. But if you notice your stamp is acting like it wants to stick to the pad, it's real sticky, or your stamp wants to stick to the paper after you've used it, what you want to do then is add denatured alcohol or Copic blending solution to the pad, because what you have is a lot of ink in there still, it just has dried up within the pad. It's still there though, you haven't used it up. So I alternate re-inking this with a stays-on re-inker, and then I alternate it with just using um, Copic blending solution or denatured alcohol just to revive what's already in there. And that works out pretty well for me. Um, but I do find this ink pad needs a lot more TLC than my other ink pads, so it's just kind of like a, it's like a, a special uh, uh, circumstance ink pad. It's, um, it's a very needy ink pad, and you're going to, you're going to be putting a little more effort into this one. And it's um, it's not a very juicy ink pad, and it, you really have to be a good stamper, I feel like, to use this pad, because a lot of times it wants to skip, it doesn't want to, like, hold to the ink, I don't know, it's just, it's a problem child. <laughs> That's all I can say about that. Um, and then the next thing I want to talk to you about before pigment inks is hybrid inks. Now, I really don't have many hybrid inks. I have a, um, I have a couple cubes, a couple of the uh, Hero Arts cubes. Honestly, I didn't even know these were hybrid until um, I saw a video of somebody using a hybrid ink and it had that flower on it. And I'm like, how come I have some that have this flower and some that have like this on it, this little like dandelion, and I guess those are the hybrid inks. Um, hybrid inks are, uh, they're kind of nice. I would say if you kind of just want a general all-purpose ink, a hybrid ink is probably a good way to go because it works okay with watercolor, it works okay with alcohol markers, it's not going to be quite as crisp as using a, um, a specific ink for that purpose, but it's going to get the job done, it's going to work reasonably well. Um, and a lot of the stamping companies are coming out with hybrid inks instead of just dye inks because they're a little more versatile than just your regular dye inks. They're, um, they are fairly quick drying. Uh, they're much quicker drying than pigment-based inks. They do seem to absorb into the paper. In fact, I, I feel like they are a little bit closer to dye inks than your pigment inks, personally. But um, but they're an option. You, it's, it's just kind of like kind of in between. I don't find I can really emboss with them very well, so um, I just kind of think they're, they're dye inks that are a little bit more versatile. But, you know, you're, you're not going to find that one ink that's going to be perfect for everything, I don't think. So moving on to pigment-based inks. Pigment-based inks sit on the top of the paper, uh, which makes them more opaque and slower drying. So they are excellent when you want to do you want to do some heat embossing so you can get a nice raised image, or you want to even have that, um, that wet ink on the surface of your paper for blending or manipulating with. You don't see that done very much these days, but before the Distress inks came out, um, before these came out, that's what they would use. They would use the color box um, pigment inks and do some beautiful blended backgrounds. 
and I think almost when the, when the Distress Inks came out and that became more popular, because it was a little bit easier to use and a little bit cheaper, I feel like that was kind of where that um, the, uh, the preference of using pigment inks kind of fell out of favor. But pigment inks are great for a few reasons. Um, they're slow drying so you have more room to work with them. They tend to stick to all types of stamps really well. So if you have those finicky silicone stamps from the craft store and they don't want to hold your dye ink, they will hold pigment ink very well. So let's grab a few pigment ink pads just to show you here. Um, often your pigment inks will work on fabric, but you can buy specialty fabric inks if you like to do a lot of fabric stamping. But a lot of times you can use a pigment ink and if you heat set it with an iron on your fabric, it will be permanent like this, um, this obsidian ink from Altenew. I used that on a fabric project and I heat set it and it, it lasted beautifully. I, I did it on my, one of my um, face masks and I've washed it many times and it has not come out. So a lot of your pigment inks are going to work for that. Now your, um, oh my gosh, I got quite a few. <laughs> your pigment inks can be either water-based or oil-based. Um, and you don't hear about that too much, but like a, a water-based glis or glycerin-based pigment ink will have generally a spongy pad. So I'm gonna get my fingers dirty here, but you see how I can press into that and you see how that, how that pushes right in? Now I have got pigment inks in the past and they have just crumbled and fallen to pieces on me. And I think what happens is when they use a spongy pad and they put an oil-based ink in there, I think that can, um, that can happen sometimes. So generally, if you see a, a pigment pad that's got a real spongy pad, that generally is a glycerin or glycerin water-based pigment pad. And then if you see the ones that have the hard, um, the hard felty type of uh, pad there, like this um, VersaFine Clear, those tend to be the oil-based. Um, the oil-based ink pads. And why does it make a difference? Well, it's just up to what you want. Um, if you're a heavy-handed stamper, using these soft these soft spongy pads could um, give you a lot more work in the cleaning up department because if you smash that stamp on there, you are going to get ink right up into the nooks and crannies of your stamp, and that's no fun to clean. I know Stampin' Up! switched from their, um, they switched from a hard, a hard felt pad to a spongy pad like a few years ago. Um, so I know it was, it was kind of a learning curve, people getting used to it. Like you really kind of slam your ink pad down and kind of your stamp pad down. Goodness gracious, you stamp, you just kind of slam and move around your, your pad all over the place so that you can kind of adjust for the hills and valleys in your ink pad. Uh, so it took a lot of getting used to for people used to stamping up pads to go to the spongy ones. Um, but you see that a lot with the pigment based pads. Um, so like Versacolor, would be an example of that. Uh, color the color box ink pads, which are no longer with us, but you might still have some in your stash. They are a water glycerin based ink pad. And when you have the water glycerin based ink pads, I found a wonderful way to make your own reinkers at home. And uh, I actually have a bunch of these. These are so fun. And if you can find these anywhere, just snag them up. These are the Dauber Duos here. And they're just these little, well that one came off, but I can use a little gl Gorilla Glue. Anytime an ink pad comes off its base, a drop of Gorilla Glue will do the trick. The original Gorilla Glue, because it, it, um, it is designed to dry in damp environments and it will uh, grab all of that. But um, these are just tiny little ink pads and they are just wonderful to use with stencils or to use multicolors on an image. I really like these and I feel so disappointed that they discontinued these. These were by Sukuniko out of Japan. But, um, so if I, since they're, they don't make these, in, well actually if they still make the Versacolor, I guess you could get reinkers, but I make my own reinkers by taking gouache and glycerin and then I just add enough water to it, distilled water to it, uh, until it gets a consistency of like cream or like half and half, um, you know, coffee creamer. And then I, I use that to reink the pads. It works perfect. And those are for the water-based spongy type pads. So uh, if your favorite company goes out of business, like the Colorbox went out of business last year, you can make your own reinkers for that. Um, so just make sure it's the water-based pigment ink that you have there. And uh, let's see. Um, and then there's also oil-based pads. And the oil-based pads have the advantage of giving you a very crisp image and um, you can emboss with them. They're just gorgeous inks. And I actually did a little bit of a demo here because I've been having people tell me that like the Altenew ink pad and the VersaFine Claire, you could actually use your alcohol markers or your water-based markers or your watercolors or anything with them. Um, especially I kept hearing that about the VersaFine Claire and I didn't quite buy it. So I decided that I would just do a little experiment and what I did here was um, I stamped the this butterfly with the Altenew there, the VersaFine Claire there, 
the Versafine New Style ink pad here and the old flip top Versafine pad that I've had for like, I don't know, 20 years. Um, here, just to see what the difference was. And um, I think that the Alta New Obsidian and Versafine Claire are identical. And upon more research, I think the Versafine Claire and the original Versafine are identical. Um, and so I did a little more research on it, and apparently the Versafine Claire is the same ink as the Versafine. What they had to do was just reformulate it a little bit. So it's not good, not going to be 100% of the same, but it's probably like 98% the same because the Versafine line, line of ink is only 12 colors and they're more muted, where Versafine Claire has 24 really crisp, bright colors. And um, but other than that, the exact same ink, other than the color for the the color palette. Um, but they did. I guess they had to reformulate it just enough so that they could get those brighter colors to hold. I really like the Versafine Claire inks. I was kind of under the impression that they were a hybrid ink, so um, I had to do some more research on these. And the more I used them, the more I realized that they're, they're a pigment ink. They're an oil-based pigment ink. They give you a really crisp result when you use. Um, water-based markers, like I used uh, the real brush markers on the orange examples, I used felt tip um, water-based markers on the top examples and water to blend them out, worked great for all of those um, all of those situations. It does seem like the uh, original Versafine, the uh, old style Versafine, and the this Versafine here did hold up better to water going over the wings, and I find that the Versafine Clear and the Altino Obsidian just faded a little bit on air, the black where I added water from a brush to blend out the ink. So there's there's a little bit of a difference there, but um, they all stamped beautifully. The alcohol markers, though, did not fare well. When I used a brush marker, like I did on the green, yellow-green version, it, it smeared the black. Um, so I thought, well, I'll try a chisel end and see how that works. The chisel end worked pretty well, actually. I think it might be, because I was using um, Copic and Blick Studio, and they have that rubbery brush tip, so I think it might be that kind of like rubbery tip that does not work so well um, on top of that ink. And I, I don't need to use it, I have memento for that type of marker, but I wanted to test it because I'd heard so many people tell me that you can use the um, Versafine Claire for anything you want, it's just the perfect ink pad, use it for everything. I'm like, I'm, I've been around too long to know that there's no, there's no perfect ink pad, but there are certainly ones that will get you, you know, they'll have a little bit more use. Um, and then I also decided I would try Memento with alcohol markers, because that's what I always use, and I tried it with water-based markers. The water-based markers did smear the ink a little bit, um, but I think you could get by in a pinch. Uh, if you had, like, what I would do, though, if you were going to stamp with Memento or any dye-based ink and use your water-based markers, I would try to pick a color that's real close to what you're stamping so that if it does smear a little bit, it's not the end of the world. Um, and then uh, I tried the Hero Arts Hybrid, and I didn't get smearing with either the alcohol markers or the water-based markers. I was kind of, like, just scribbling over the edges. I didn't have, I have, like, a couple colors with that, so I didn't really have a good, um, a good color to, I didn't have black, basically, to be absolutely fair, but I didn't see any ink movement. It did seem to, you know, maybe soften or lighten up in areas, but not bad. I mean, seriously, I think you could get by with the hybrid inks for watercolor or alcohol markers and then save yourself from having to keep two kinds of ink pads around. Um, Ranger Archival, it worked perfect with the water-based markers, but it did soften with the with the alcohol. It really kind of blurred that line there. Um, and of course that picks, and it picked up the ink onto the tip of my marker. So I wouldn't use Ranger Archival for alcohol ink unless it's just like maybe a big outline of a flower and you can avoid the edges pretty closely you know so maybe you're blending out to white and you can just leave a gap between your coloring or just barely touch it I think you'd be all set um, but uh, but yeah that's that now also distress oxides they are a new type of ink and I was going to mention chalk inks chalk inks are pigment based ink they leave a matte um, chalky finish, kind of like the Distress Oxides, but the chalk inks don't really react with water um, for whatever reason. Maybe they have a, uh, I never, wouldn't consider them to have an oil base to them, but um, they definitely, they, they're usually on a kind of like a squeaky foam pad, and, um, and they don't give you any reaction with water. Distress Oxides give you a beautiful reaction with water. They're the only pad that I know exactly like this. They dry to a chalky finish. If you're, um, your distress oxide ink dries in your applicator tool, it will like be very dusty and chalky when you um, when you go pick it up next time. It'll leave like a like a dust, like dust everywhere. Um, these are really fun. I bought reinkers for these and I have had to reink some of the pads. They're just kind of a neat opaque pigment ink that doesn't really have a glossiness to it. I don't think you would be able to emboss with this too well because it is so 
dry and dusty. Um, I, I just don't think it would be a very good use of this, this ink pad, but for like special effects backgrounds, it's just wonderful. Um, and we talked about fabric inks. A lot of these inks can be used as fabric inks. You don't need to get specialty ones generally. I would test on a scrap, you know, stamp with it, heat set it, and wash it and see what happens. Um, there was, there used to be more varieties of ink available, but it was really just the same thing remarketed. So I'm kind of glad that the ink pad market is kind of contracted a little bit. But, um, but uh, yeah, that, that's pretty much it. So your oil-based inks, I find pigment inks are going to give you a crisper image. They're going to be real good for sentiment stamping anytime you want real, real good detail. And they're waterproof. Your um, kind of spongy water-based pigment inks, they're going to be really great for anytime you want an opaque coverage. And also your pigment inks are less likely to fade. So you could use them in your scrapbooks and not worry about those inks fading so much in the future or even in artworks you're going to hang on the wall. I hope you found this useful. Uh, of course, there's embossing ink, which is just clear pigment ink that you can use to leave a stain on your paper or a watermark. Sounds better than a stain. Or you can use it for embossing with embossing powder. But you can emboss with any of these pigment inks generally except for the Distress Oxide. Maybe you could, but I don't think it would give you as crisp of a, of a detail as like the Versafine Claire or a Versamark um, embossing ink. Before I say goodbye today, I want to give you my recommendation as to what I would start out with as a stamper if I really wanted to uh, just get the basics. So what I'd recommend would be a full-size ink pad in Memento ink if you like to use alcohol markers. You don't need this if you don't use alcohol markers. I would recommend a full-size ink pad versus Fine Claire because you can watercolor with it and it gives you really crisp sentiments and you can also use embossing powder over it. I would recommend a variety of ink pad minis in a variety of colors. Now, if you get the Memento sets, you probably will get a black in there, so you don't need to have that full-size pad to start off with, but it's really handy if you like to color with Copics. I would recommend a just a clear Versamark pad for watermark effects and so that you can emboss with um, whatever embossing powder you like. You could also ink up a stamp with the Versamark and then use a colored ink pad and then ink it up with clear and then get a um, um, get a embossed design of whatever color you want. Although that is not the best looking, it looks okay, it looks all right. So if you're just getting started, um, it looks all right. It's not quite as good as using a colored embossing powder or using a pigment ink, but it will get the job done. And um, if you think you'd want to do any any opaque effects on colored cardstock, you could get a white pigment ink pad. And that would be my recommendation to get started. Like I said, if you're going to get this set that has a little um, memento black in there, then you could obviously omit the larger pad. I just use mine all the time, so I recommend having it in a larger pad. If you can't get Versafine Clear, the regular Versafine is just as good. The um, Altenew Obsidian is just as good. They're all very similar. So um, hopefully this will kind of help you decide on what you might need to get started started stamping or maybe um, you know you can look at what you have and you can see where you might have some gaps in your collection and you might need to add a pad or two. I do like specialty ink pads. I love doing ink blending and things like that. So um, you know I really enjoyed those but if you're just getting started uh, started out in stamping I think that's kind of overwhelming and I would start with this because you can use you know your blending brushes on these if you want to and blend these and do those effect effects as well they're going to be a little more versatile than having a bunch of the distress inks which really are best for those um especially techniques and do not stamp quite as well as your you know just basic dye based inks or we could do cube hybrid inks whatever it is like any any good good assortment of cubing it doesn't have to be this brand it could be Gina K it could be Hero Arts you know whatever whatever is easy for you to find and whatever fits your budget um it's they're all so similar it doesn't really matter um I hope you found this useful please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and until next time happy crafting